Good morning. This is the first course in ICEM Hexa. ICEM is a pre-processing software for CFD analysis from ANSYS. It's one of the most powerful pre-processing softwares out there in the market today. Being powerful, it's also very difficult to learn on, on your own. Uh, its difficulty stems from the fact that it, it, it takes a different approach to meshing and uh, the, the, the motive of this course is to train the student into an, and the a new user in, in a much more efficient way of tackling complex geometries using ICEM hexa. Please note that the course concerns only with the hexahedral aspect of meshing using ICEM. The tetrahedral mesh, which is much more easier to learn, won't be covered in this course. My name is Vishal Anand and at the time of making of this video, I am a PhD student at Purdue University in the US. My expectations from the student is that they should learn the modules sequentially. They should not skip the modules as in you should first start with the first module, module 1 and then go on to module 2, module 3 and so on. Please do not skip the modules. And also there has been a presentation uploaded in the description part of this video. The presentation explains in detail the various options available in the ICM CFD GUI. So you should read the presentation in tandem with the video lecture. We are in module 2 which concerns with intermediate geometries. The geometries consider, considered in module 2 are uh, more complex versions of the basic geometries of module 1. Uh, for this particular lecture, the geometry considered uh, consists of two cylinders and a truncated cone. Uh, this geometry is a, uh, a more uh, complicated form of the geometry discussed in module 1 which was uh, uh, which consisted of two cylinders only. So before we go on to this uh, this uh, this lesson, uh, uh, it's strongly advised to uh, revise the module one video lecture on two cylinders. So this is what the geometry looks like. Uh, you you see here, this is the main cylinder, and this is uh, another smaller cylinder, and this is a truncated cone. Uh, so it's like a hooper. Uh, this can also be called as a, a as a taper or a truncated cone. Uh, so this is what the geometry looks like. Uh, for blocking purpose, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we will, uh, it's easy to visualize this truncated cone as nothing but a cylinder itself with two bases of unequal radii. The base, uh, this base of the cylinder and this base of the cylinder have unequal radii. So it's more almost as good as two bases of unequal radii, this, this truncated cone. Uh, so that, 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 uh, that's how we will uh, uh, visualize the blocking. This is the initial block and uh, we, we will split at where, wherever the topology changes. The topology changes here from this cylinder to this and here and this cylinder to this. So there are two splits in the original block. And then uh, we will proceed uh, uh, with the O-grid formation to capture this cylinder. We'll make an O-grid and, and attach it here to capture this cylinder. For this cylinder, uh, since uh, this, this edge is, uh, is not straight, it's not, uh, it's not a parallel to any of the axes, uh, it's tilted. So we don't, uh, we don't uh, need an O-grid to capture the, curvage, uh, the, curvage, the curved surface here. Uh, we will associate the original block itself to the curves here. So th this cylinder will be captured by, our, uh, by the original block while this cylinder will be captured by the O-grid. And then we can improve the cylinder, uh, uh, we can mesh quality can be improved by making another O-grid throughout the block. So to reiterate, we will initialize the block and split at the, at the points where the topology changes. Uh, the, the, these two cylinders, the topology will be captured by the original block itself. We will associate the edges to the curves. For this cylinder, we will need to create an O-grid and, uh, and attach the O-grid 
to this uh, to this curves and delete the outer blocks and then we will create one more o grid to improve the quality so this is how the blocking philosophy uh, looks like uh, let's let's get get ahead uh, and start with the geometry in the icm gui for your convenience and for a speedy tutorial i have always uh, already created the parts this is the shell uh, the hooper the the end of the truncated cone is the hopper i'm sorry uh, the outlet is here and uh, the outlet pipe and uh, of course the walls uh, I, and uh, as is the norm as has been the norm in this course i have clubbed together all the curves in a single part and also the points in a single part So without much uh, ado, let's let's uh, initialize the block. Uh, I have create uh, we will create a new part name called fluid. Uh, no entity selector because the block will enclose the whole geometry. So this is the block here, and now we proceed to split the block at the places where the topology changes so the topology changes at two places here at this is one of those where the truncated cone gives way to a larger cylinder and secondly here where the larger cylinder gives way to a smaller cylinder let's let's split the block So we have split the block at these two positions. Now, uh, uh, as I said initially, uh, this truncated cone topologically it can be viewed viewed as nothing but a cylinder with two unequal bases. These this base and this base have different radii. So we will uh, we will associate this outer block to this curve and this outer block here to the curve here to to capture the topology of the truncated cone. For the in, in, in a smaller cylinder, we have to create an O grid as we did for uh, in the other video lecture about two cylinders. We will create an O grid here and the inner uh, inner uh, uh, the O grid uh, the edges of the O grid will be associated to the curve here while the outer blocks will be deleted off that's that's the strategy we'll follow and of course for these two faces uh, the the edges will be associated with the curves now i uh, proceed to uh, initiate the o grid let's switch off the surfaces and middle click and then select faces And say dismiss. So we we have the uh, we have the uh, O grid split here now. Uh, we will begin the association now. Uh, I will associate the uh, outer edges here to the to the end of this truncated cone first. Similarly, the other face of the truncated cone, the outer edges are associated to the bigger circle. So I have finished the association for the outer edges. Uh, 
just so that the curve looks better i will associate the o grid on these two faces as well we we see uh, the o grid edges here i will associate this to this circle here and i will associate this o grid edge to this circle So I have associated the O grid edge to here. Uh, now uh, the associations are almost complete, but the uh, but the question remains that what will happen to this this O grid edge? These four edges of O grid. What, what will happen to them? Once we associate the this these edges, the green edges, to this curve, what will happen to them? So to cater to these four edges, uh, what we will do, we will improvise and we will improve the geometry a little. We will, uh, we will, we will create another circle inside this circle so that we can associate the O grid edge to this circle. So let's do that. I will go to geometry tab and then translate, transform geometry, I'm sorry, and then uh, scale geometry. And then uh, I will click on copy because we want the ge geometry to remain. And then this 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 circle is in x z plane. This is in x z plane. This is in x z plane as you can see. This is in x z plane. So we will uh, we will create we will give the factor of o, o point eight and o point eight on x and z factors. But y factor will remain as it is. That is one. So no scaling in y direction, but x and z are 0 0.8 for this circle because it's in x z plane. And then I will select this circle. I will click on this and select here, select the curve here, and then middle here. And center point about which the transformation transformation will happen will be the centroid of this curve, which is nothing but the center itself, geometric center itself. So we we have to select the centroid option here, and then I will say apply. So I have created another circle which is concentric with the same circle, but it's it's uh, it's uh, 0 0.8 times the uh, rad radius of the original circle by using this uh, option. So uh, this this gives us this gives us a, a way to associate the the remaining uh, uh, this O grid edge here. I will associate it with this curve and that's it. So before I project the vertices, uh, let me let me uh, let me have a look on the uh, the edge association. So show association. So we see that these edges are associated with the bigger curve, while the smaller edges are the associated with the smaller circle here. Similarly, the The, the O grid uh, edges are associated with the, uh, the smaller cylinder here as well as here while the larger uh, blocks are associated with the larger cylinder here. So it looks it looks okay and so I, I, I do uh, project vertices. I switch on the vertices here and then I do project vertices. And then say all visible apply. And then the vertices are shown here. We, we forgot one association here, the vertices, the curves here should be associated uh, with the O-grid uh, edges here as well. Uh, that will make the block smoother. 
Uh, right now you see there is a tilt here in the edge here. It's not this edge is not collinear with this edge. So I will make uh, I will do the association here and this will make the edge. And again, after this association, I will again do project vertices. So now after this association, the edge becomes much more uh, collinear. It, uh, the, this edge and this edge are now collinear. They are in, uh, the shape looks better overall because of this association now. So uh, uh, after the association and projection, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier and as was mentioned in the previous uh, in the previous module module 1 where two cylinders were meshed to capture the shape of this cylinder we will need to uh, delete out this this uh, block here four blocks here around the inner o grid will be deleted so let's let's start so this is the no no Yeah, this is one of the blocks. This is one of the blocks. This is the third block. And this is the fourth block. These are the fourth block, four blocks which need to be deleted. I press the middle tick. And say apply. So now you see the block topology matches with the curve curves with the geometry exactly. I proceed with uh, giving edge dimensions, and this is like six. So uh, I will now proceed with the pre-mesh here. Let's have a project curve. This gives a better view here and switch out the edges here. So we see here that topology has been captured quite perfectly. There is no problem in capturing the topology, but as usual, uh, when we mesh a cylinder, we see some bad quality elements here at the corners. Similarly, here the quality is pretty bad. I will, uh, I will make the mesh a little finer.
So this is how the mesh looks like. Let's do a quality histogram, the pre-mesh quality and angle and say apply. We see some uh, some uh, low, low angle elements here. Let, let me uh, switch back to wireframe and then if I click here, we see the low quality angle is nothing but at the corner of the cylinder, the inner cylinder here. And similarly, the, at the corner here, we have some other low quality angles. So we know we are well trained to understand how to get rid of the low quality angles. We'll do an O grid. So let's let's make an O grid, the innermost O grid to capture the quality, to improve the quality rather. Pardon my language. So. I will select only the inner blocks, the innermost blocks in each cylinder. Make the O grid pass through that. These are the three blocks, which are the innermost blocks in each of the cylinder, and I have selected them to create an O-grid. These three blocks, then I move on to select the faces. So this is the end face here, and this is the end face here, and press right click and say apply. This, the function of this O-grid is to improve the quality. I will do a uh, edge, uh, specify the edge here. Say four here. That's all. We'll go for a pre-mesh once more. You see, there is no, uh, there are no elements with bad angles here or here. We can confirm with a pre-mesh quality histogram. Select angle here, angle and say apply. So we see the minimum angle is now 49.68, which is exceptionally good. And uh, that, that's how we captured this geometry. We created a block, we split at where the topology changed and then we created an O-grid to capture the curvature here but we captured the curvature through the main block itself here and then we created uh, another circle here and associated the O-grid to that circle and then at last to improve the quality we created another O-grid. That, that's all for this video lecture. Thank you.